we have a spool which is being pulled by this force F and this force always makes this angle theta and its value is also constant. We need to find the acceleration of the spool and work performed by the force F during the first t seconds. So here you might be wondering which direction the frictional friction will occur. So you can see that this force will pull the center of mass towards right and also this force is going to rotate the spool anticlockwise. So both the motion of the center of mass and the rotation of the spool both are trying to slip this point towards right. So friction will be towards left. So this is the direction of friction. This is F which is at angle theta. So we need to find the acceleration. So let's uh, do the typical torque and force calculations. So first let's do the torque. So force into distance R and F into distance capital R. So these are the two which are contributing to the torque. So because we know the friction will be acting backwards, let's assume that the spool will be rotating in this direction. So we are not sure yet, but let's assume that uh, it is in clockwise direction. Because we are dealing with variable, in any case, if our assumption is wrong, it will come to be negative, it doesn't matter. So FR minus uh, capital FR is equal to I alpha. So I is given as gamma MR square. So this is the first equation and second one for force. So F cos theta minus F is equal to MA. And A we are taking as alpha R because it's given that the there is no sliding. So we have two equations and two variables. So let's find alpha first because we need the acceleration. So solving these two, we get alpha to be this. And now we know A is equal to alpha R. So this gives the value of acceleration. Second, work performed by force F during the first t seconds. Now this is the case of pure rolling. So work done by friction will be zero because this point is always at rest. So whatever work is done, that is change in kinetic energy. So that will be half mv square plus half i omega square. V will be omega r. So we write and omega will be alpha t. So that's what we'll do and get our answer. So this is the first method of solving this to get the value of alpha where, where we use two equations. Now let's see a small method where we don't need two equations. So in that case, of course, we can write the torque about this point because then we will get rid of this variable friction. So let's do that. So we are going to, uh, to write the torque equation about point P. So this is the force which is in this direction at an angle theta. So we extend that and then let's extend this line also. So torque will be F into this distance. And this distance you can see is R minus small r. And sorry, sorry, sorry. I mean R cos theta minus small r. So up to here, this distance is R cos theta minus small r, that will be this gap. This gap is r cos theta minus r. So f into r cos theta minus r is equal to i alpha. So i will be about point p, that will be i plus mr square. So here in one line, we got the value of alpha. But of course, if we need to find the value of friction also, then we will need to write two equations. Now the result which we got for the alpha is very interesting because you can see that there is a negative sign in between. So what happens if r cos theta is greater than r or if what happens when they are equal or the what happens when r small r is greater than r cos theta. So let's see all these three cases. So first is when cos theta is greater than r by r. So that is when this term is positive. So alpha is greater than zero. So our assumption would be correct. It will be rolling in clockwise fashion <clears throat> and it will move towards right. So you can see also 
in the diagram that about point P the torque is towards torque is in the clockwise direction so it's going to rotate clockwise second case cos theta is equal to r by r so in that case alpha will be zero and you can see here so this will be the case when the line of force will be passing through point p so about point p torque will be zero so alpha will be zero now you can see this value in the figure also what is cos theta here so you can see this is cos theta this is the theta which is given so by geometry this angle will also be theta so if you have doubt just extend this line so this will be theta this will be 90 minus theta so this will be theta so if this this angle is theta you can again see that uh, cos theta is small r by capital r and that's what happened here so in that case your net torque about p is zero and alpha is zero third case cos theta is less than small r by r so in that case cos theta is small which means theta is large and the line of force will be right towards right of point p so you can see that because of that force it will be rotating in the counterclockwise fashion and the whole spool will be moving towards left so these are the three cases where we get to see that depending on this angle theta which side the spool will roll all right